Hello, hello, happy day 17. All right, this will take just one second to get pushed through and be live. I'm just sitting on my peanut ball right now. It is cold in Georgia today, my friends. It is cold. So I kept clothes on till the last possible moment. All right. Today we are going to be blasting lower body. I'm just going to kind of wait a second for the notification that the live has kicked on. Do a little dry brushing while we get that. Dry brushing. So good for detox. Long, firm strokes. easiest to work a dry brush into your routine by putting it somewhere that your clothes are coming off anyway. Nightstand next to the bed, um, putting it near the shower, especially if you're new to dry brushing, you may have some dry skin flakes. So doing it in the bathroom is always helpful. My favorite part of doing like the detox portion of this challenge has been just bouncing on the yoga ball or rebounder and getting back into my dry brushing routine. This was one of like the first self-care tools I ever bought because it was six dollars at the grocery store. going to show you today, I'm going to show you without showing you, right, how I blast my glutes. Because there's usually some hidden adhesions in there. And this time of year when it's cold out is when I do my deeper work. I am in a phase of bruising because I've taken the challenge of doing more heating um, as part of this challenge, more my sauna blanket is right here, it's folded up. I lay it out on this table and climb in there and lay in there until I've been actively sweating for 20 minutes. It usually takes about 45 minutes for that to be the case. Alright. Might have to message them and see if we're stuck in limbo. Mm. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get started because the less people live watching me blast my glutes is probably not a bad thing. And I want to be about everyone's time if you end up watching this on the replay later. Alright. So my favorite way to blast my glutes is I'll put a towel on the floor or obviously I will sit up here on the table and I will hinge forward. The underside of my glute and my hamstring tends to be one piece and it takes that bottom portion of where I want my booty to be nice and round and it like flattens it down into a pancake. So I always take 
Crow Blaster, I lean forward. I'm not going to fully turn towards you because nobody on the internet needs to see that, right? Crow Blaster, getting the whole cheek. I know that it's been said over the years that blasting the glutes can cause volume loss. I have never had that problem. If anything, all right, it looks like it finally kicks me on. Hi, everybody. We're blasting lower body today. Um, this challenge has been very detox focused, very quick, large surface area, light blasting, building healthy habits. I'm gonna show you how I do my glute blasting. This is a personal preference. I found that I had adhesions back here, and since I've been committed to the detox portion, I've been heating up a whole lot better. And I wasn't willing to be concerned about loss of volume over something that could release an adhesion that's causing problems in my back. So I personally choose to blast my glutes. <clears throat> I'd rather them be smaller and smooth, in my opinion, and also take away any imbalances or adhesions. So I'm gonna stay to my side while I show you this, because you know nobody needs to see that. But I have oiled up the glute area. My hamstring and glute are so tightly connected that it takes the bottom of my butt and pulls it flat like it's connected on the back of my leg. But I found the more that I blast my glutes and the more blood flow that I get going, the more the muscle grows. So I keep a pro blaster in my shower and I will do this with my foot popped up on the shower shelf. I like to get down like this and lean forward because it really stretches this area and takes any loose skin, fatty spots, and just gets nice and tight for me so it's easier for the tool to glide over. So again, blasting glutes, a little controversial. Some people are really, really worried about losing volume. I have found that I get a better rounder shape, better muscle access to the glute max, the glute medes, and the minimus in here, overall giving me a better shape. I did my dry brushing earlier while it was waiting for Facebook to you know, help us out here and make it live. You can do both sides. This is as light or as deep as you want, as long or as short as you want. But I also take my Pro Blaster. I tip the tool to the side and I push down. I'm thinking of taking like my love handle area up here and pushing it until it becomes part of my butt cheek. Same when I'm working the hamstring. I'm pushing up and I'm lifting and I'm lifting the booty and thinking of all that stuff that's stuck in there going where I want it to go. So I just wanted to show you guys that because glute blasting, for one, it's hard to film it <laughs> and show it, but I wanted to do that and explain. I am in my winter mode where I work deeper tissue, deeper, longer blasts. I have also hit some new layers since I've been such a good kid about using my sauna blanket and getting really heated. So I have had some bruising pop up, but I also find if I take the days like this where I'm doing a little more surface area and I just go a little bit lighter and bring some nice blood flow in, it's almost like a magic eraser and it helps that little bit of blood flow coming in helps to move out the stagnation and a little bit of bruising that likes to linger. I do not ever touch anything that is painful, only if they are completely painless. So I'm gonna start top half of the leg and then I'm gonna work my way down below the knee. Just to get started, I'm gonna use the brush and blast base. I'm gonna do both legs at one time just to get the initial light blast and blood flow going. I am not 
pushing the tool down. I'm just using the weight of it right now and letting it glide gently over. I do make sure I get in the hip crease. That's why I wore kind of a high-waisted bottom. I'm gonna try to show you guys as much as possible, but just remember when I am blasting myself, I'm usually in this room by myself, naked with music. So it's kind of hard sometimes to make it a little more Facebook friendly for you. And then I'm gonna take the same tool, back of the legs. I do kind of like a little yoga chair sit here and then just up and down. This also allows me to get that glute hammy tie-in again from a slightly different angle. Depending on your flexibility, you can do one foot at a time, you can prop it up, you can bend all the way over flat where you're fully extending your hamstring. You can kind of squat down into it. Each way feels a little different, so I try to do a mix of trying them all. If your hands get super oily, the tool may flip or roll, that's normal. I could always stop being a little lazy and just wipe my hands off, but where's the fun of that? All right, side to side. When we finish blasting today, we are going to do the adductor fascia yoga stretch, the glute fascia yoga stretch, and calves and hamstrings. So we're gonna hit the whole leg. I also like to alternate between seated and standing because blasting is a workout. And sometimes, frankly, I just get tired and my muscles feel different if I let it sit and completely relax versus standing where I'm getting a little more of an activation. So I feel like I get just an overall different blasting sensation by alternating between standing, sitting, relaxed. Once I get the blood flowing, if I can see my skin is starting to pink, I will do a couple squeezes in between because muscles love that blood flow. I'm just using my pro blaster right now. I'm just going all over the upper leg. I will alternate leaning, doing like a figure four type stretch. This spot right here where the saddlebag meets the glute meets the hip crease always seems to be a little bit tender for me. So when I'm working a deeper day, I will take the side of my pro blaster and rake it through like that scooping motion, like I'm scooping out the hip capsule. Prop my leg up, lean into it, go over the hamstring. and it is hot in here so this is becoming like its own little sauna moving to the other side the inner thigh I've had a lot of good luck lately with finally getting that like fatty blob right inside my knee to finally go down it's been really really nice I use the pro blaster and the pro nugget over it and it's finally making its way down if you are flexible you can totally get into all the crazy yoga positions. Try a little bit of everything. If you need to lay down on the ground and stick your leg up in the air, do it, give it a try. Every different position gives you slightly different muscle access and a slightly different feel when you're blasting. 
doing like a little scoop at the hamstring just because for me personally that spot gets so tight and it's so bound up at the banana roll banana roll little lateral bands that sit below the booty that I've got to give it some extra extra attention hmm. all right so I'm just gonna do a couple little squeezes here just flexing the muscle I did a really heavy leg workout Monday so I'm still in recovery mode I'm gonna take my pro nugget and today I'm not gonna blast with it I am just tapping and just gonna feel if there's any spots like right here things get feel a little numb and I know that I have a big old chunk in there so I'm gonna give it a little poke and wiggle a couple days ago I did a deeper blast with it so if you have time or if you're working into deeper layers by all means add as much time as you need there's a little spot right there but every single time you blast your body tends to feel different you'll find different little spots and I've noticed it's really helped the skin above my knees lately and adding those little bits of like muscle activation gives some extra filling into the loose skin when I lost 85 pounds a few years ago then it looked like my whole body melted it was rough now if you choose to blast with the pro nugget or do a large claw same rule applies you're doing the same up and down or side to side motions you control the pressure so you can keep it as light as just the tool gliding across the skin to as heavy as kind of carving through some of those layers the brush and blast base is my go-to for most everything the mini 2 becomes my default large claw tool so many times because holding this bar in the middle is just so easy so we're just quickly going over the area we already blasted. And we're gonna oil up the low leg and go all the way down to the feet. If you ever need more time and specific tutorials, Ashley has tons on YouTube. There's tons in all the groups, so you will never be without the information. And there's ones where we zoom all the way in and you get all the nitty gritty and see every tendon and muscle. And then times like this where we're working more on overall feel. So I'm going to lean to the side and start working on my calves. I play a lot of tennis. If you're familiar with me, you already know this. So I'm always working to keep the shins nice and loosened up because of all the jumping and springing on the court. It's very common where like a shin splint will try to surface. So I'm moving very quickly brisk along the whole low leg just trying to notice spots like right here is a little tender so I'll come back to that right here along the shin where it connects I take between two claws on one end of the pro blaster and I line my shin bone kind of up in there 
and just do a nice slow pass on the shin for the foot. I've got my toes pointed down right now and then I alternate flexing my foot up because right in here tends to get very, very tight for me. So I have to keep it loosened up so I don't hurt myself. Calves feel real good. If you're a brand new, like brand, brand new to blasting, certain areas you may not be able to blast for very long. When I first started, the first time I ever touched a tool to my calves, I was instantly startled by how tender that tissue was. Like tears in the eyes and I didn't even do anything. I just touched the tool to my skin, but this, my calf was such a big bound up just piece. It was in a whole lot of pain. So I could only blast my calves for about 10 seconds at a time, but each time I did it, it hurt less and less because healthy tissue should not hurt. So that's one thing I like about this year's challenge setup is the heat focus. I spent many, many years blasting without heat because it's very beneficial, but using the tools on your body, the friction will warm the tissue. It is just going to take more time. It's gonna take a little bit longer. And when I first started, just getting the habit was all I had time for. I would blast my whole body in 60 seconds because I used the tool like a loofah in the shower and that was all I could commit to. I made it a point to put the tools in my way so I would touch them at some point every single day and I found putting them in the shower made it so possible where I could lather up, take whatever tool I had at the time when I first started was just the original, run it over my body as if it was a sponge and that was my blast. For the day. That was all I got. <laughs> but it built the habit and the routine of putting the tools in my hands. I hope everybody's doing well on cleaning up their diets and whatever method they're following if you're following the challenge way of eating or something different because obviously nutrition is so customized but I feel really good after December <laughs> where my diet consisted of cookies and some more cookies <laughs> so I had to really get that back under control there were sourdough cookies I made them myself but they were still not good for me this ankle right here is a little tender. So I just hit the top of the foot. There's so many little tendons and muscles and little bones in there. Side of the foot. I find that the feet and the hands are some of the easiest to do like while you're sitting on the couch. It requires minimal lubrication for this area to get a nice glide just because of the texture of our palms and our feet. So if you're still building the routine, put a tool by your couch while you're watching TV in the evening, work on your palms and your feet or do your scalp. Those are just little tips that I picked up in the beginning to just find a way to make it part of the routine. And being halfway through this challenge, if you have not done it yet, wash your tools, put them in a sink with some dish soap. Dish soap's pretty good about cutting through the oils we use. Top rack of your dishwasher on a gentle cycle. It's another option. Anytime I blast my feet, it is tool washing day. So that's where all of these will be going as soon as we are done here. Whew, that one tickled a little bit. 
All right, so for the calves, I'm gonna take Pro Nugget and same thing. I'm gonna run my shin in the middle of it. And I do a poke and wiggle all the way down. This is usually where I find whichever muscle is gonna try to cause me a problem in the shin splint department. And then when I find the little culprit that's trying to ruin my tennis match, I do a little bit of scraping out from the shin. Not too much pressure, but just enough to give it a direct little comb through. Same around the ankles. So many little hidden adhesions around the ankles because fascia is everywhere. It likes to hide in the nooks and crannies. So make sure you blast your nooks and your crannies, okay? Flex foot, pointed foot, feeling the difference in my calf. in the winter, I have to be very, very conscious of my foot placement, my posture, my position, the way I'm moving, how warm I get, because I'm always working against my body trying to be stiff. show y'all these fascia yoga stretches there today's have a few more like parts to them to make sure you get the long and the short abductors so want to make sure we get a good look at those I do blast on my knee over my knee I fell on this one years ago and I didn't ever get it checked out. <laughs> so, I have no idea if there was anything wrong with it, but I can tell you it was about yay big for about three months. <laughs> but clearly I have no problem with movement and playing sports as long as I stay on my routine. All right, give that a little wiggle floss those muscles around a little bit. I'm gonna dry my hands. I'm gonna take a little bit of this oil off my body so I don't slide around on my yoga ball. We're gonna take a little walk. I'll move you guys so you can see my do 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 whole office floor. Welcome to my office. All right, so the first stretch we're gonna do is the adductor. This one is a two part, put some shorts on here for a moment. Because I'm not trying to have any wardrobe malfunctions trouble with the powers that be. All right, first one, knee's going to be bent, 90-90. You're going to put your knee and shin supported on the ball. You're coming forward in a nice, solid quadruped position, and you're opening both hips at the same time. We're not just pushing one. I think you're making like a V, and you are spreading 
open. And depending on your flexibility will determine how much room you need on the ball. If you need to start with your leg a little further in so you have more room to roll out, you can do that. If your hips are tight and give you problems, you're just gonna have to breathe through it. Mine tend to feel very, very stiff in this one, so I have to floss in and out and breathe as my body sinks down into each one. Once you've done the short, you're gonna line your ball back up. Your foot is going to go on the ball. I'm gonna spread a little bit wider the other direction. And you're sinking down in. You can see both legs are spreading. I'm not maintaining a perfect 90-90 over here. Everything is opening. Quickly realizing I need to stretch my inner thighs more often because they're a little tight. So I'm going to move through this one. I'm just kind of floss it. Roll my foot around. Switch sides. I will go through comments and questions later when I can see them. And same thing, we're going to switch foot being on the ball. my arms at the gym today. I did so many push-ups that right now my arms are shaking. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing? I thought we were done. <clears throat> All right. Now the glute one may be one of my absolute favorites. you're essentially doing the classic figure four but with your foot on the ball this one can be as stagnant or as mobile as you need in the videos for Ashley's Bashi Yoga she shows so many variations tipping from side to side holding and pressing your knee open kind of have to move around to find the spot where you feel it the most in your glutes. Bring the ball in and then you can even bring the legs over and open the knee back up. This particular position is where I feel it the most because I can feel it where it wraps around from the glute to also opening up the hip and that's my favorite variation. Again you can hold everything as long or as short as you need. Each side of your body usually feels different because our imbalances hang out differently like this one. I feel it so much more without hardly rolling the ball in because this hamstring is so tight. So we're gonna give this one a little more of the movement option. Drop over. Sure, well, yeah, I got the foot down, knee up to 
position, but this one's definitely, definitely tighter. So I'll have to spend more time working on this after. Of course, the calf and hamstring stretch we're about to do will hopefully help open that leg up. Pressing your foot like into the ball. It's going to squish in and try to pop out if you have oily feet. Put a towel over it. Make a little more grip. Sometimes you just have to hold it, but you feel that more in the hamstring. Ideally, your feet would not be freshly oiled. You'd be able to stand. Let's see if I can, if I got enough oil off it now. supported but in theory you'd be able to stand up straighten up and your foot would stay I have grippy socks upstairs it's usually what I use if my feet are freshly blasted to try to give me a little more traction but right now it works you can just modify hold on sometimes it's just hard in general to bend over and stretch here calves and your hamstrings, but you really want to hold the ball as straight and steady as possible and keep calf all the way done. And then again, if your feet will stay gripped to it, the goal is to stand up and hold a nice strong alignment this way while your foot's pressing into the ball to give you some of that traction to kind of push against and you feel it work all the way up your legs. So that's it. I'm gonna go take a shower. If y'all have any questions, drop them down here and I'll answer them for you. Have a good day.